Hello everybody, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Saturday, April 23rd, 2011, and I am finally back in the garage rebuilding the bat cell. Uh, but first I want to bring you up to speed quickly with a story that was first reported on the Smart Scarecrow show uh, last week and the week before. Um, several months ago, I had the opportunity to pick up a used Geiger counter on eBay and uh, got it for a really good price and uh, glad I bought it when I did. Because if any of you now go to uh, any, of you, any of the dealers you might think of to purchase a Geiger counter, they are very likely out of stock. Hmm, wonder why. So anyway, um, over the last couple of weeks there have been a couple of uh, rainstorms that have passed through here in the northeast. Right here is a tub of water that I've been using to collect rainwater off the table on our deck behind the house. It's not exactly level, so it makes a good collection platform. It drips off all, all one edge, and I'm able to place this and collect a rather large amount of water in a fairly short period of time. But if you look at this video clip that I'm about to show you, uh, on the side of the Geiger counter is what's called an operational check source. And by placing the pickup wand directly on top of the operational check source, A, I'm able to detect whether or not the device is actually operating, and B, I'm also able to check whether or not the device is calibrated. Um, to check the calibration, I'm on the times 10 scale, and uh, all you do is hold the wand directly on top of the operational check source sticker on the side of the unit and you should measure approximately 0.2 millirantons per hour, plus or minus 0.1. And uh, you'll see in this video clip that it's pretty much right on, so I know that A, the device is operational, and B, it's calibrated. Uh, I next move on to put the wand directly on top of the water, uh, only about maybe an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch away from the water, and I also changed to the times one scale for the most sensitive reading that I can possibly get. Uh, I do get a, a, a couple of clicks every now and then, but uh, other than that, uh, there is actually no excess radiation being picked up. Now this, this particular uh, rainstorm has come straight across the United States from west to east, so if there was any probability of radiation being dropped from the, from the rainfall, it would likely come from a storm that uh, approached us in this direction. So I will continue to watch it. As we know, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the fallout is very much dependent on the, the weather patterns. So with each rainfall, I will continue to, to check the, uh, the radiation levels in the water. But right now, I'm happy to report that there is no excess radiation in the water falling on the northeast anyway. I hope I'm able to put a few of your minds to rest. Uh, over here, in this box, I have all of the parts ready to go back together for the bat cell. And uh, right now I'm actually streaming live on Justin TV as well um, to uh, put this back together. And I'll be filming the sequence of operations that will be necessary to put it back together. I have a couple of couple of things that I'm doing differently this time. Instead of using um, sections of plastic cable tie as shims for the plates, I'm actually using nylon cord and I'll be wrapping the cord around the plates to sandwich the plates together and keep them spaced. I did find that the, the, um, the nylon cable ties that I used to compress the stacks together actually relaxed and loosened up and the, the plates were sort of free to move around a little bit more than I, than I would have liked in the, uh, in the original build. So that's one thing that I'm doing differently. The other thing that I'm doing differently, here is the original six chamber cell, six chamber uh, box. And the next box is actually going to be seven chambers. I'm decreasing the voltage per plate gap just a little bit more to uh, maximize the efficiency. And I've also picked up a section of 5 16 inch stainless steel threaded rod to use as my bus bar in between, the, in between the chambers to increase the conductivity over the quarter inch that I was using. 
these are nicely wrapped up from Larry. All of the uh, all of the plates that he media blasted for me. I'll be unwrapping these, <clears throat> and I'll be handling them only with gloves, and I'll be passivating them in a 10% solution of citric acid, uh, warmed up to about 100 110 degrees for maybe uh, 10 minutes um, prior to assembly, and then rinsing with distilled water. So that's all for now. This is Fossil Fuel. I appreciate you watching. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, I hope you will. I hope you'll tell your friends about my channel. Ask them to subscribe as well. Uh, we want to get the word out about hydrogen injection and uh, hydrogen on demand. It does work. I have proved it. And uh, I, am, I am satisfied that I'm, that I'm going in the right direction. The next, uh, uh, the next project vehicle is a 2006 Hyundai Elantra with OBD2. Uh, engine diagnostics. So it is a it is a late model vehicle. It has current electronics, and uh, it is something more common that you'll find on the road. So hopefully, uh, we'll be able to uh, present and document substantial mileage gains on that vehicle. Take care for now. Zero fossil fuel. Peace.